Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Gamma Dai Gamma. So, again, apologies for not being so regular as I used to, or what you're used to. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about this interesting, these interesting uh, class of functions, trigonometric integral functions, especially uh, the cosine integral function and the sine integral function. I'm gonna cover an identity a series representation of both of them and and we're gonna see how this ties back to one of my old videos that I had made and which was in my opinion severely underrated because I guess it seemed random at that time but mind you nothing on this channel is ever random with that being said let's get started just start or set the mood for this video I'm just gonna define some fun function so we know this we know the exponential integral function I made a video on this and I said this was severely underrated so just watch that if you haven't and I'm sure you haven't defined as integral from z to infinity e to the negative t over t dt and I think it's like pretty evident if you like plug z equals zero, you'll see that it's, it's this is not trivial and this does not converge. But what we can do, and we're gonna see how this basically sp spits out the trigonometric integral functions that I talked about in the in, in the intro. So if we have t equals u z, dt will be z du. And then this just becomes integral from one to infinity e to the negative uz over uz and uh, zdu. So stuff cancelled off. We simply get integral from one to infinity e to the negative uz over u du. Now what I want to do is just tweak this parameter z because again well if you don't know this this function is has a complex domain so z is, is ca can be a complex number also so and what I'm going to do is just multiply by an i inside the argument and you'll see how you know that tweaking is possible because the domain is just extended like that so as I said let's tweak this a little bit so this is basically rotation by 90 degrees on the complex plane but I mean that's just the geometric picture of what's going on the real fun is inside if you see what's happening here now no, I'm sorry this should be du e to the negative i uz over u du well nothing much has changed so far but now you see we can use Euler's identity to write this as the cosine of uz over u du minus i times well, let's keep the bounds the same sine of uz over u du and now I would like to do some sort of a back substitution. So t equals uz. So get rid of like the uz. Wherever you see a uz, substitute a t. Do the same with the upper and lower bounds. So you see what's, go what's gonna happen here is I gotta have integral from z to infinity. Cosine of t over d, dt. Minus i times integral from z to infinity we now have a sine of t over t dt and I'm gonna call this quantity negative cosine integral at z plus i times 
small s i of z. So turns out there's like two kinds of sign integrals, like one where, where you write like write it with the capital S and one like this where you write it with a small s. And we're going to talk about those. Why is there any point in talking about these is well before like going into any other discussion let me just redefine them down here so ci of z is negative integral from z to infinity cosine of t over t dt and then similarly small s i of z is equal to negative integral from z to infinity sine t over t dt okay and then let me just make a distinction between the capital s and the small s sine integral functions so turns out we we define the sine integral function with the capital s uh, i'm going to call it the uh, sine major we're going to define sine major as integral from 0 to z sine t over t dt this is just a definition and how are they connected well for this it's, it's simple you just split the interval from 0 to infinity or keep the argument variable the same it helps you to evaluate or whatever minus integral from z to infinity and that's how you basically again z should be greater than 0 and finite that's how if you have a 0 to infinity minus z to infinity you're going to have a 0 to z that's just what linearity says in this case and then we made a video on this didn't we this is just pi over 2 this was a really trivial integral it seems now because we've come a long way but it's one of those fundamental videos plus well we know what this guy is right we just defined it on top sine minor that's small s sine major is connected to sine minor with this formula so sine minor of z is simply sine major of z minus pi over 2 that's just the distinction between them and this distinction will basically help us later on now now what I want to do wh why did we even talk about all this is because I in that infamous uh, the underrated video I also gave a series representation for the exponential integral function so if you if you watch that and, <laughs> and I urge you again to change its status from being under underrated to well whatever my normal videos are and so we're gonna use that and then we're gonna do a clever trick that complex analysis or just complex numbers in general the properties of them allow us to do okay so in that video and again I'm urging you to watch it it's not even funny anymore <laughs> so the series representation was given as negative Euler mascaroni negative natural log of z plus sum k equals 1 to infinity minus 1 to the k plus 1 z to the k over k times k factorial and now just like tweak the parameters again because we just you know tweaked it before natural log of i z sum from k equals 1 to infinity negative 1 to the k plus 1 i z to the kth power over k times k factorial one thing we can do is the natural log you see you can we can split this up it's a, it's a product in the natural log so we can write this natural log of i plus natural log of z natural log of i well take the smallest like value or smallest angle that, that for which you get i so that's e to the i pi over 2 plug that in here because again you, you use Euler's formula you see this is i again 
So you plug that in here, bring the i pi over 2 down, natural log of e is 1. So you just have i pi over 2 and then just this part that's unchanged. So this just becomes negative Euler Mascaroni minus i pi over 2 minus natural log of z plus well we still have the sum and we we can't really do much about it so when we when you can't do much about it just like try to gain some perspective on this so you try to expand this out uh for like k equals one like this is this will be positive we have i z over 1 times 1 factorial so just don't worry about it i z and then for 2 we have like a negative here but then i will have i squared so that's like negative so that becomes a positive in general and it's real because like there's no i z squared over 2 times 2 factorial and when like k equals 3 this is positive i cubed is negative i and we have a z cubed over 3 times 3 factorial let's just do this for one more z to the fourth 4 times 4 factorial because you get this negative because of this 4 plus 1 uh, negative 1 to the fifth is negative 1 and i to the fourth is 1 this along with this like stuff that seems kind of arbitrary at the start and then uh, of course this like keeps on going so you see the pattern here and why is this important like i I, th I think you you see the motivation behind tweaking the parameters but here's the the final blow it's because we we just like found this right through integrals this is negative cosine integral z plus i times sine minor of z So you see, we can just, since the real and uh, imaginary part are independent of each other, we can just collect the real and imaginary terms from this series as well. So collect the real terms and multiply by negative so that you get an expression for CI of Z. You see CI is like the real part. So uh, Euler Mascaroni is real because it ha doesn't have an I with it. Same thing with natural log of Z. So, and then use this negative to like get rid of that negative. So. You have Euler Mascaroni plus natural log of Z. And then it's all these like terms that are generated by the series. So if you see the pattern and you work with me here, when is it real? Well, you see it's real for like even, but like even if it's even if it's real, the negative sign is like changing, it's oscillating. So minus one to the K. Because you multiply by negative, this has a negative. So it starts with a negative. So minus 1 to the k. Z to the 2k because we have a 2 here. So when k equals 1, we have a 2. Over. And like the denominator follows the power. So that's 2k times 2k whole thing factorial. That is indeed the series infinite series representation for the cosine integral function which is a non-elementary function so this is a big thing okay and, uh, and trust me this is this we're gonna use this for the the kumar log gamma fourier series expansion someone requested that i haven't forgotten and i had promised even in the last video i hinted that i'm gonna do it this is one step towards doing it because we need this especially for like the sine coefficients in that derivation now sine minor of z is well just like get rid of the i right like whatever it was multiplied with the i just look at that and then drop the i because you have an i here as well so that means we have to look at this negative pi over 2 up front and then the terms generated by the series so again work with me to look at the pattern so the pattern is where you have a z and we have plus one, so minus one to the k plus one, and that will keep the sign from you know oscillating in the right phase. 
z to the 2k minus 1 because this works out you plug in k uh, k equals 1 you have 2 minus 1 which is 1 matches the power here and the denominator again matches the power so 2k minus 1 times 2k minus 1 quantity factorial and that is sine minor but if you remember the formula sine minor of z is sine major of z minus pi over 2 so if you drop the pi over 2 here we also have generated a formula for sine major that's just the infinite part and again you guys might not see why we have a distinction between sine major and minor it's not it's not clear to me either mathematician convention whoever came discovered this first decided to do it but I think one reason behind it is that this integral from 0 to infinity of sine of t over t dt actually converges to pi over 2 but the integral for the cosine for example I don't believe it converges in the conventional sense at least so I mean that's that's probably why we have this like pi over 2 sort of delimiter here but these formulas are, are really, really important. You, mi you may not think they're important, especially this, the sine, major, and minor, because we, don't, we won't really use them. But, you know, if, if you're solving a, like a crazy integral and won't get solved, and you run into like some non-elementary functions, because these guys are just defined through the integral, like through integrals that can't be solved. Just like the error function was defined, right? Error function was something like, something like this it existed at infinity but not maybe not other points or it was hard to see or get a close form for this but th that's the principle and then these series just help you get some perspective on those things so don't forget them and watch the previous video if you haven't for exponential integral function series infinite series representation so we have a family of these now that's, that's cool that's it for this video please like share, and subscribe to my channel guys recommend me to your friends i apologize for not posting i'm trying yeah, i just have to like you know do my homework way before time clear my schedule and then if i have energy to make a video but i'm trying Thanksgiving break is coming soon, so I'll have more time there. See you. I'm always there with you. Don't worry about it. Peace out.